Hello YouTube and welcome to episode 7 of A Railway Empire. This is intro Aether. Right, so what I normally do at the start of the episode is just have a little look around whilst the game is paused and see if there's anything that I can spot. Um, and this time we noticed that Baltimore has uh, expanded its meat industry. So we're now after 7.2 cattle per week. Uh, we don't actually need to supply that much for the time being because we don't have enough uh, demand to make use of 4.8 units of production. And especially now when we have a meat factory in Buffalo, up here. And we're going to want to start using that. We do have a task in here which is to uh, reach a population of 70,000 in Buffalo. And after I explained how the, the score is calculated for these tasks, we're going to want to get on with that. We also want to grow Syracuse and Albany. Uh, both of these towns are a pivotal point. Once they reach 40,000 inhabitants, they will become a level 3 city and it will open up a new industry. Uh, now it's almost certain that we're going to have a cloth factory you know, spawn up here. So once that happens, we're going to have uh, lots of expansion to do. So I think for this episode, we're going to start obviously with connecting this. A connection bonus here. Just looking at how close we are to the station, or how close this resource is to the station. Just thinking about how we want to merge into our main line here. It's always handy just to have a look around and see if there's many other things that are going to be joining the line. If you've got lots of um, resources, like in this area. You have to be a little bit more mindful as to how close you place the switches. Um, also, I noticed in one of the other videos, I was quite... Um, I mentioned about laying tracks. So I have the double track to line up with platforms 2 and 3. Um, that is something I still would prefer to do. But I find when making these videos, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to concentrate on everything. What we're doing the commentary and that sort of stuff, I'm not particularly used to that. Um, so there's one or two mistakes here. Ideally, I would have done what we'd done on the earlier line when we expanded to Albany. Yeah, from New York. I'm not going to start deleting things for the time being and sort of reworking that system. We just don't have enough money. We can spend our money on, uh, on expanding. So we're going to place a small station here just to collect this sugar. Um, also, these two cities, as well as being Syracuse and Albany, that is, as well as being a good candidate for a cloth factory, we also have sugar over here. Sugar. And we have fruit over here. Now, these two items are needed to create al alcohol, not beer. Beer is a different thing. We have beer here, which obviously requires the wheat or the grain. And then a little bit further down on the list, we have alcohol. Uh, slightly confusing, <laughs> but there you go. Maybe they could have called this spirits or liquor, something like that. That might have uh, helped. But the production of alcohol is sugar and uh, fruit. So once again, Syracuse and Albany here would be a perfect place to put a... Um, I think it's called a distillery, and that's where the alcohol is produced. So let's get started. I'm going to expand this line to the right, and then we can curve round. And that way, our, when we merge into the main line, we're not going to be too close to the station. That'll do. Oh, maybe not. Oh, we don't have the money. Let's run the game then. didn't realise that. another connection no it's the same connection bonus we do have another bonus over here it's a similar thing to what um we had down at was it Smythe's area was that your wheel that just rolled towards me <laughs> i'm really considering going to the options and turning him off but maybe not uh, this is just another industry basically that there's a slot there uh, but we can't really afford that for the time being
So looking at these contours, it looks like this is a quite a good area for us to bring the line in and then merge because it's, it's the lowest area. So if we place our station, what are we, one contour, two, one, two. So it looks like about here is pretty much level, I think, with our main line. And we go as far to the left as we can, give us as much room as possible. Right, so for track, and obviously I've put the expansion of the, st the station here towards the river so that it doesn't encroach on this red circle. Whether they um, allow you to place a station like that, I, I maybe don't think they do, so maybe we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to come out of here and then into this area. Now if I put this spline here, I'm actually placing the spline onto this piece of land which is raised up and hence we get this bridge. What you'll find is if I place this spline like down here where it's a, I'm placing the spline on a lower piece of terrain, it will actually then go and cut cut the path there. If, like I said earlier, if you put the spline here, you can use the shift button and the mouse wheel in the middle, and then you can actually manually lower, lower it. I'm just going to delete that, it's got all complicated. Right, so straight out of the station, then we're going to curve around. We have one go to the left, and one go to the right. I really want this piece in the middle to be fairly straight. So let's manipulate that a little bit. The trouble with add adding these extra spline points is, like I just talked about, it places the spline actually at ground level you know, depending on where it is. So you do sometimes have to manually adjust them quite a lot, the more splines you have. All right, so we're getting close. I don't think we can do much better than that. This uh, canyon here is already getting quite high for when we double track. We'll try that. 53,000, it seems a lot for a small piece of track, but it is going to give us plenty of room coming into this station so we can stack plenty of trains without affecting the uh, main line here. So I'm literally doing this station just to collect this uh, bonus, so I do hope it doesn't uh, disappear by the time we get enough money to lay our track there. We're uh, getting close. Ideally, I'd just get straight on with sending those passenger trains towards Buffalo. That's the sort of thing we really need to concentrate on. Right, so we can just join this into the main track now just to collect our bonus. Whilst we're here, we'll put the switch in, otherwise we'll probably forget. And then set up a line and wonder why it's going all the way to New York to then turn around and come towards... <laughs> Right, so that will do for the time being. We've collected our bonus there. It hasn't really cost us any money as such. Now, obviously, if we're going to be sending out a lot of passenger trains here in New York, which we're going to want to, uh, we really need some more platforms. We're already getting quite busy here. Six trains on this one. Sorry, seven trains on uh, platform number two. Seven trains on platform one. Uh, and uh, certainly, we're going to be telling our passenger trains that are le leaving to Buffalo we want eight carriages. We obviously want to maximize the number that we carry up there each time, as that is a specific task. So it's expensive, but we're going to have to just expand our station. We could actually place a second station. That's not too bad an idea. But then we'd probably spend a bit more on the track, which merges in. I mean, ideally, we would have a second line all the way up here, just for this one particular task. But that would be one, two, three, four stations. So really you want two platforms to save them having to sort of meet head on in the uh, station. So it's probably 400 grand and then the track. No, that's getting way too expensive. Certainly once we've made a bit more money, if towards the end of that task it looks like we're going to struggle with it, then we might take that approach. But for the time being, 
we're just going to expand our station here. So now we need a bit more, bit more cash. Let's let this run for a time or two. Ah, we have some uh, researching. So we can take this, which increases the transportation fee of freight. 8% boost to our bankroll. And we have a conductor. And this guy is for a mail train, so we'll quickly throw him on a mail train. This one. Alright, so now let's uh, sort out this little bit of track here in New York and just join this into the main line. We're going to want to join it into the main line quite a long way up. Because we don't want these trains to be held up by our freight trains or vice versa. Right, so it's not actually going to let me do that. We're going to have to bring a point out of here. It's going to look a bit ugly, probably. Hmm. Well, it is what it is, I'm afraid. That'll do. It is what it is. It looks terrible, but whatever. Right, so we're going to want to um, dock our trains into both stations because we, we're not going to have any through traffic on this station or on these two platforms that we've just added. So two switches before the uh, platforms is what's needed. One to get into one platform and one for the other train to get back across going the other way. A signal. Now. Let's merge these in up here. This is causing them to cut across traffic, which is... um something really you want to avoid ideally you'd kind of wherever you were going to cut across traffic like this you'd have a bridge um, kind of like how a freeway junction or a motorway junction has a like a flyover that would be a good method but the trouble with the, trying to do that on this game is that because of the scale of the game you end up with these massive bridges where you can't turn the circle fast enough and things like that and it gets a bit ugly anyway Right, so when our trains come back on this line, the bottom line here, they're going to be able to flip over and into these uh, separate lines for them to dock at the station. And similarly, when they come back out, they can get back onto the line to Buffalo nice and easily. Just got to quickly tidy up these signals. This one here would be a problem. Put it down there. This one we might as well just bring up a little bit closer. Oh, wrong button. So, something like that looks about right. We've got a water tower there, actually. That's fine. That's good. It means that these trains will at least uh, have somewhere to resupply. Right, so there we go. Yep, that's fine. So now we just need to save up some money and then we can start sending out some trains. A security guard. So he's just a bog standard 5% freight. Just going to throw him on this cattle line again. We really need to um, kind of have a quick check of all of our trains and see which routes are making the most money and which ones aren't. And then of course you can organize your staff to extract a little bit of extra cash. Right, we're going to set up a rail line. Obviously it's going to go from New York all the way without stopping to Buffalo. Once we've sent this train out, we're really needing to get on and um, double track at least this bit here. And then we're going to want to upgrade all of these single stations into two track stations. What we'll do is we'll dock the normal trains that go from like A to B in platform one and then we'll let our passenger trains overtake them in platform two. That will of course mean they'll have to stop if there's one coming the other way. But I think that should be quite a quite a good way of doing it. 
Right, so this is going to be a manual line. From New York, we want to just take passengers. We're going to use platform three, and we can see that this yellow line here, which is indicating where our train is going to go on this journey, has moved to platform three. We want eight carts. Right, now when we get to Buffalo, there's no real incentive in bringing passengers back. But as we're going to have a lot of these trains heading this way, we're also going to have a lot of them making their way back this way. So in Buffalo, we can tell it... Uh, let's take uh, these off. So the way this is working is, this is the incoming train. And obviously in Buffalo, this is the traffic coming in, or the, the cargo coming in from New York. And then we're telling the departing train to not have anything on it. So we could tell it to pick up mail if we wanted to. You can click on these, take them off or remove them. Uh, now we're going to put any goods. And this basically, I, I would imagine, will essentially put it on automatic. And whatever's there that can then go to our next stop, which is going to be Syracuse. Whatever Syracuse needs, this train will pick up. And because there's going to be quite a few of them, it will probably only be like one or two carriages at a time. So we'll probably have a mixture of cattle, or sorry, meat, and passengers, and maybe one or two mail trains. But I don't expect any of them to, um, to be full loads. So we want to make sure that we don't have a maximum number of carriages here. It's just going to gradually make its way back to New York. In Syracuse, same thing, we can bring stuff back to uh, New York from Syracuse, although we're actually, we're not particularly going to want to, because there is no there are no freight goods that New York needs off of Syracuse. So for Syracuse, we might as well put this back onto passengers. So we're on the Syracuse station. We can remove what's coming in and then put passengers and mail. We'll just alternate them like that. And I think that's about as optimally as we can do it. Now the next train we set up We've set this one up to leave platform three. The next one will be leaving platform four. And when it gets to Buffalo, as opposed to going to Syracuse, it's then going to skip Syracuse and come to Albany. And that way it's going to start supplementing Albany with the meat from Buffalo. Getting Buffalo to grow, we really need to start, uh, you know, getting some movement over here. So shipping the, uh, the, the meat out is going to help these two cities. And is it, like I say, about many things in this game, it's an accumulative effect that is gradually going to um, improve the, the entire sort of ecosystem we've got here. Right, so let me double check this. New York, we are leaving track number three. This is what's coming in from Syracuse. We're leaving with just passengers and we want eight carriages worth. I mean, Buffalo, we are getting rid of our passengers. And we're loading with whatever it needs. Zero carts worth. And in Syracuse, we're getting rid of whatever we just picked up and we're alternating passengers and mail. Um, I'm thinking actually there's no point in doing that at all because it doesn't need beer. Beer's just never going to be chosen, so we'll just put it on random here. Or any goods, it's not, it doesn't say random, it says any goods. So that's essentially automatic, so that's fine. Right, so this guy we're going to call New York to Syracuse. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to call it New York to Buffalo. Ah. And then in brackets, I'm going to put Syracuse. Just to let me know that this one also docks there. And then at the beginning here. Our standard. Oh, we can't. There's too many... Too many characters, right? Well, a P will have to do. Can't actually add our locomotive yet, so we just uh, need to save up a tad more cash. There we go. Right, so I can start cloning this train now that I've got it set up. And because I'm going to set the next one up, which is a very slightly different route on a different platform, I'm going to be easily able to just select or click on this platform and clone it directly from here. 
and then I can click on the next platform and directly clone that one. That isn't showing yet, obviously we haven't made it. But that's what we're now going to do. So our next line, New York. You can actually click a platform in here. You can see that this is selecting the platform. I hope you can see that behind. So we're gonna try that. Let's click on platform four. And then we're going to go to Buffalo. And then heading back, this one is going to stop in Albany. Yeah, so it didn't actually pre-select our platform four there. So you are still going to have to head up here and edit the actual stop. So manual mode, eight carts, platform four, passengers, buffalo, any goods, no required carts, Albany, perfect. So this is New York Buffalo with Albany involved. And we'll give this a peek. Oh. Save up our cache. So this guy is already loading. He's waiting for eight carriages. Be a good indication as to how often we can send them. Uh, a few more quid and then we can, there we go. Right, so now that this train has just taken a, a train full of passengers, be interesting to see how quickly this one um, fills up. So what are we on? 6th of March. So more research too. Right, so this one is gonna annoy me. Wait creating more staff members to deal with. Right, so our next research is the increase of innovation points. And as far as I know, I will have to um, quickly off camera check that there are no more bonuses for that. As far as I know, that's as much science as we can get. And certainly with having the dot character as well, I don't think there is a way to possibly have more by this point. Right, so let's see how quickly this guy fills up so it's a sixth at the moment right so he's off on the 14th that was pretty close to the 13th so we're gonna call that what a week Ah, oh, this is nice. This guy reduces the prices of a new engine. So we're going to be using him when we are, uh, once we've run this lot completely into the ground and we replace them. Right, so that was a week. So realistically, we could send a train every week. Um, now what we want to know is how long the entire journey is. And that way we can work out how many trains we're going to send at an, at an interval of one week whereas we've kind of got the maximum number on here we can and as I say we are then as soon as this money rolls in it might even be better to um, form a second station here and again at the top we can always nip across with that line and join here to make use of the uh, reduced prices of a double track so that's what we're going to do I think that's it for this episode though so the uh, beginning of the next next episode we're going to make a a note of keeping an eye on this guy and seeing how long it takes to do this journey and then we know how many of these trains we can send. Right, thank you. Take care.